In the summer of 1539, DeSoto and uh, 30 or 40 infantry and about an equal number of cavalry were marching north through Florida. They were an advance guard uh, from the main army that they'd left behind, and they were trying to find a place to stay, uh, looking for camps and so forth. And their Indian guides must have led them in uh, to the town of Patano. Uh, at the time, the main Patano Indian town located on the south side of uh, Orange Lake. <clears throat> we would expect that the town had several hundred people, uh, perhaps a hundred houses, teepee-like houses built of wood. Uh, there would have been a central plaza, the houses around them, uh, probably a chief's house, and certainly a council house, a huge structure uh, with benches inside that the Indians could meet uh, for ceremonial activities and so forth to discuss issues. Uh, probably held a hundred or so people in there. Uh, there would have been dogs, kids, uh, hides drying on stretchers, uh, people preparing food, people making uh, pottery, uh, sort of a, a typical Indian village, except this one was the major village uh, for the whole province of, of Patano. To the natives, this would have been uh, uh, an overwhelming sight. I mean, even something as simple as one of the glass beads we found uh, it was about the level of an iPhone to these people. The colors, uh, the smells, the horses, the men on a horse looks as one individual beast. I've never seen a horse before. So here we have 50 horses with men in armor and lances. Which would have been approximately 12 feet long. And they also did refer to themselves as lancers. Now also, they would have carried a flail, which is basically a, uh, a handle and a chain and a steel ball with spikes on it that they would swing and take out their enemy with. We have about uh, four or five hundred accessory troops with armor. We have litter bearers who are bringing supplies. Uh, I think it would have just been an overwhelming experience. And DeSoto evidently took advantage of that in some respect that when he was on his horse and first seen by these people, they thought he was a god. And he was asked even by the priest and stuff not to correct, not to correct this, to go with that. It lended more gravitas to his uh, appearance, you know, uh, a supreme entity kind of thing. There's a giant sinkhole right here. Behind the sinkhole is fed by a creek. The creek also runs right behind you right here. And this area, the creek overflows and it'll be a border of white sand. Um, so that's why artifacts are easy to find in this white sand. We're, we're at um, a grid area where we discovered an assemblage of artifacts from 1539, which correlate with the Hernando de Soto Entrada through Central Florida. The coin was identified as a Ferdinand and Isabel coin, uh, unknown mint, but was made from 1479 to 1504. That was significant as it predated the ranching period of our initial hypothesis. And then it was only later to find two more coins in the same period, as well as the glasswares from Italy and the iron from Spain that that assemblage we could confirm as uh, Hernando de Soto contact. The camp size could have been uh, 400 soldiers because there were 50 lead men. There were probably other groups of scouts and follow-up people and supply uh, people still in the Ocali area collecting corn. But all in all, this could have, uh, with the native population, could have been over a thousand individuals here. They would have carried a sword, this is prior to the rapier, 
Uh, it's basically about 32 to 34 inches in length. They would also have carried a uh, dagger, uh, which was uh, in a longer form, would have call, been called a gouch. In this pouch here is their mess kit, which is basically a wooden bowl and a wooden spoon. Uh, on the other side, they would have had a knapsack where they would have carried their, uh, the food for the horse, which would have been the maize. Uh, also spare horseshoe and nails and a, uh, and a hammer. The Queen Isabella was the first person that requested that pigs come to the New World. She had asked Columbus to bring them to Cuba. And Hernando de Soto, we know, brought a group of pigs with him. So then to find the, the Sof Scrofa, is the, I guess the genus of a, a Spanish long-legged black pig. You've, we found those, then that's when the de Soto hypothesis came to light. I'm not sure that it that the discovery of the white site changes history, but it sure helps to bring it alive uh, when we can say something happened at this spot and we can show evidence of it. Uh, I, I think that moves us forward. It makes it more exciting, it's more fun. But now also that we have the site, you know, the, the discovery and the recognition of the site is really a beginning. Uh, it's not an end, it's a beginning. It's the start of a lot more research. Uh, it helps us to understand what things were like on a, you know, a summer day in 1539. Uh, we can go back in time, we can go forward in time. So it, it's, it's a beginning. It's a beginning to research and even more understanding. Plus, it's lots of fun. It's fun to learn about history, and I'm sure it's uh, very exciting for people to realize that they have such an important bit of history right in their own backyard. The decision to excavate here was serendipitous. In 2005, we had, I believe, three named hurricanes and several tropical storms that came through central Florida. And here on this ranch in particular, there's a lot of drainage. This is a higher area, about 70 feet, drops down to 50 feet, and all of this sand broke loose. And we had artifacts just laying, scattered artifacts on the top of the, the ground. And that was the decision, you know, to look here. When we found enough beads that it would complete a rosary and, uh, and several sets of those, then we, then we switched to a religious use, so a mission. And then we found the soil staining, and the soil staining was definite enough that you could measure between the soil stains, and we knew those were Spanish measurements, that it was the vara. So then this became a Spanish mission hypothesis. The, the size of this mission structure, we believe, was an aisled church. And it would be 35 by about 64 to 65 feet. It's actually in Spanish measurement. It's in varas, and a vara is 29.32 inches. And that's how the post holes are, are measured. It looks to be, like I said, an aisled church because we have a row of center post but they're off-centered. There's two rows of them, and they would be about 12 feet in or four vara all the way up. And the building orientation is east and west. And to the east would have been the, like the altar area or mantle. Could have been even, a, that's where they sometimes also built the big fire pit, fireplace kind of thing. When the creek overflowed and we originally found the singular Spanish coin, then we knew this was had something to do with the Spanish mission chain. And we knew directly south of here, I believe it's two leagues away, was uh, Silver Springs. So this would have been the next stop. So somewhere in this vicinity was a Spanish outpost. The, uh, the very original thought was it was a Spanish ranch or ranchero. And that was our hypothesis for uh, probably two years of the work here, that it was just a Spanish ranching outpost. And a few years ago, we were excavating this site here, and we discovered a, a cache of Spanish coins. We picked this particular site because 
we figured on an embankment, the erosion and soil differences, the coins would have come to the surface or any artifacts we might find. Initially we found, um, what was it, like a oh, matchbox match toy, you know, and it's like, well, you know, it's interesting but of no significance and then not very far from that was the coin and then that got pretty exciting and so then you know kind of looked around some more and then realized what was happening and kind of backed off and waited to get you know everything verified and you know sometimes you look at that they're encrusted so when you find something sometimes it's not initially apparent what the object is until you actually get a chance to take it back and look at it. In the case of coins found together, sometimes with a purse or maybe a ceramic vessel, but sometimes together and there had been a purse there that has disintegrated, but we can tell from the way they're found that they were together. That's what we call a hoard, and that's because people buried them in the ground intentionally with the intent of eventually digging them up. The fact that they didn't dig them up probably means that something happened to that person between the time they buried it in the ground and they recovered it, and that's why it's in the ground for us to find. Generally, when we find copper coins on a site like this, or any site, it's because they are lost individually in the course of trade, in the course of buying and selling very small commodities like eggs or bread or something like that, or possibly, in the case of soldiers, gambling or something like that. Uh, so if a group of coins are found near each other at a archaeological site, it's often that that was the site of the marketplace where people would get together with locals selling produce. The site that Ashley White has found uh, seems certainly 100 percent, I'd say, to be the uh, main Indian town of Patano that DeSoto had, had been at and also uh, the location of the later mission of San Buenaventura de Patano. Uh, we never really knew where Patano was. We had uh, a, a couple of ideas. One is it could be uh, on the west side of, of Orange Lake if DeSoto went sort of up through Kendrick, Lowell, Martin, uh, that way as he headed north. We would have expected that to be the site or he could have been farther west uh, in uh, Marion County as he went through. Uh, so what this discovery does is to pinpoint uh, the side of Patano for us. And so now we can say DeSoto went there. So, so it's, it's just, it's very exciting because here, you know, here for the first time we have this concrete evidence that you can hold in your hand and look at.